So you can't get too much of this figure. <laughs> Remember, this figure actually talks about how there are three circulation cells in each hemisphere. Three, three times two hemispheres is six, if you ask me. But um, <laughs> anyway, just I hope you're getting a sense for how complicated uh, how complicated the atmosphere is. And then the thing that we call weather, the thing that's going to kind of influence us in our neck of the woods, the thing we look at in the morning to see how to dress and whether to bring our umbrella. Um, it, it is so, it is driven by things that, that, that we can see, but uh, honestly, and we can kind of understand, but due to uncertainty and chaos, it, it's really hard to come up with a forecast and to really know. It's just complicated, is, I guess is my point. So I want to kind of show you um, kind of some more twists on this three-cell model. So before I show you kind of the twist I want to show you um, in this segment, I want to uh, just take a look at these are all surface. These are all surface winds. And I hope you recognize that. So these would be the, um, the northeasterly trades uh, uh, associated with this Hadley cell in the northern hemisphere. These would be the southeasterly trades. Um, here's the feral cell. Here's the polar cell. And here we have feral cell and polar cell. Um, so this is an idealized situation. Now just to highlight a few things, finally now we have the intertropical convergence zone highlighted right here um, and here we have remember we talked about that descending air uh, air descending that ends the Hadley cell and actually kind of begins the feral cell um, there's a kind of a band of air that's a relatively high pressure and this is where we have our deserts and us up here where the feral and the polar cell meet we have what's called a subtropical low because actually we have again a band and that's where we have our polar front polar front and we have a band of ascending air right there um, so now this is the reason this is idealized, and we're going to kind of compare this to the last side, slide in this segment in the next, the next uh, slide, is because we are assuming that um, the Earth's surface is hom homogeneous. The Earth's surface is either all water or all soil, all the same texture. Um, it absorbs the same amount of as, as radiation hits it, it's going to interact with that radiation from the sun the same way. Um, so let's compare that to something else. Okay, so this is that same figure. This is an idealized situation. Um, and actually, it's kind of interesting because when we look at um, the gaseous planets, uh, beginning with, of course, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, um, the, our gaseous planets, they are, uh, their, their surfaces are um, gas. <laughs> and so they do kind of have this sort of band feature, band nature to them. Um, but in reality, and we've talked a, a little bit about that this in this class, that the reality of it is, is that we have continents, we have land masses, and we have uh, water, large bodies of water. And I don't know if you remember, but actually, what is it, uh, three-quarters, 75% of the Earth is actually covered with large bodies of water. So we are kind of a, a liquid water world, which makes us uh, unique. But um, So we have a couple of different things happening because of water versus land. And you can kind of see them with the swirls here. You see the swirls kind of going on here and here and here. If you look closely, you can still see, let me see if I can kind of erase that. If you look closely, you can still kind of see, um, uh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> if you look closely, you can uh, still see the three cells in this model. Let's see, in this uh, figure, let's see if we can, uh, we have uh, the first cell, um, here we have the the Hadley cell, and we have our northeasterly trades, and here we have the feral cell, we have our mid latitude westerlies, and here we have the polar cell. We at our surface we have our easterly easterly winds again here. Um, but you see the swirliness of it. And the swirliness of it comes into account, for instance, I'm going to highlight the continent of North America. All right. 
North America does two things. Um, it's a, the land mass, it will heat differently, and actually it also gives a place with regard to wind for friction. Okay, friction, remember, is um, uh, another uh, game changer with regard to um, winds, and small scale winds, large scale winds. So I guess I don't have a lot more to add. I just wanted to show you that instead of that idealized situation you saw previously, just because of water and land masses, we tend to kind of have these sort of um, kinks in our uh, prevailing winds, and there are more kinks yet to come.